having trouble with the pass rush in Madden 24? Thank you. Don't block the running back in Madden 24. Mm. Doing this will get you sacked every single time. What? Try this adjustment instead, and it'll pick up the blitz every single time. If you want more tips like this, stick around after the intro. Show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to go over tips, tricks, and cheats on both offense and defense and give you a huge advantage in Madden 24. But before I do, I make a lot of videos like this throughout the year. So if you guys want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, it's going to get right into the video. The first few tips I want to go over are in the settings menu, including how to go through the settings menu itself. When you're going through any menu screen, like picking a team or picking a play before a game, did you know you can go through these screens at a much faster speed simply by repeatedly pressing the R2 or the right trigger button? whether an Xbox or PlayStation. Doing this will help you cycle through the screen much faster, making it much quicker to go through any menu. The next tip is for the offense, and it has to do with passing. I know a lot of people are struggling with the new feel of the passing system when it comes to the freeform reticle. So if you find yourself constantly under throwing balls for interceptions or just having accuracy issues as a whole, I'm going to show you what I think is the best passing type setup to use in the settings. I am first going to reset the settings back to the default placement and accuracy. So if you haven't changed these settings since you first selected them at the start of Madden 24, this is exactly what you're going to look like. Classic passing, by the way, is not a bad option for people who are struggling with this, as it requires much less input from you and is overall probably more consistently accurate for short intermediate passes. I made a full video breaking down the differences between these different settings, so if you guys want to learn more, I'll once again have a link in the description and on-screen pop-up at the end of the video, so stick around for that. But if you're using either placement settings, you will have the option to choose your freeform max distance and the freeform reticle speed, which make all the difference in the world in my opinion. First, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to run this as default. The play that I'm going to be using is a one play touchdown against cover three out of my New Orleans Saints offensive ebook. Links in the description and top and comment if you guys want to learn more. I chose this play because of the accuracy required to make this throw of the seam, as I want a tight window to illustrate my point. For deep passing the work this year, you really need to do more than just pass lead, which is using the right stick only inside the cat circle. Only pass leading inside this circle is fine for short to intermediate throws, but if you want to throw deep like this, you will need to leave this pass circle entirely and lead your receiver outside of it, which is where the freeform passing comes in. To do this, you simply have to hold the left trigger while making the throw. Sometimes I find like this catch circle is too hard to get out of though, especially in deep passing, as it feels like there's some sort of magnetism that tries to keep the reticle close to the edge, making it harder to get away with a proper pass lead and leading to an underthrown ball that's usually intercepted. The best method that I found to turn whatever this is off and allow me to get outside of this circle easier is to change the freeform reticle max distance from near to far. This setting feels like it turns it off enough while still helping you to keep it within a certain distance, while max distance feels like it turns it off completely. So if you're going to use one of these settings, I also suggest to lower the freeform reticle speed so that when you leave the circle, it doesn't have a chance to go that far. But just like anything else, these are things you have to try out on your own and select which one works best for you. My next tip is another setting that is always turned off by default fault and that is the defensive heat seeker assist turning this on will help user control defenders when pursuing a ball carrier as it will help steer you towards them when trying to make a tackle I first want to show what it looks like when this is off. As you can see here, I get really close to the ball carrier, but I don't make the tackle as he jukes me at the last second. But I couldn't be any closer without getting assistance. When I turn it on, you can see that getting close the next time results in a much more consistent tackle animation as it helps to target the ball carrier better from close distances. This won't do much from far away, but you can see as I get close to this defender, he will stop. That wasn't me. That was the heat seeker assist that just kicked in and slowed the defender down for me. I still didn't make the tackle though because I was sprinting, but you can see the difference. So if you're struggling making tackles in the open field, turn this on and see if it helps. Next up, I'm going to go over some offensive tips, starting with some pre-snap adjustments. The pass rush can be a huge problem for your offense, especially if your opponent is using man zero blitz or sending more rushers than you have blockers. I'm going to use another one play touchdown play from my eBooks that I have already put out in some gameplay. Links in the description once again. For this play to work though, all I have to do is put the X route on a streak. But there is still the issue of picking up the man zero blitz, as I only have five blockers against six rushers. You can block the running back or the tight end, but when you do this, the man defender assigned to this player will turn to a deep zone and provide better coverage on the deep routes that I'm trying to attack. And you can also see that the running back didn't work anyways as the rusher just runs right by him. So if you want the best of both worlds where you can hold that man defender while also giving yourself help to pick up the extra blitzer, all you have to do is go to your hot routes menu and turn this running back into a check and release, which is down the right stick. Doing this will technically have him on a route that the computer has to account for, but it will also do a much better job of picking up the immediate blitzer as the running back actually gets the block this time while his man defender just 
stands around in the middle of the field waiting for him to release into a route that he never does. I decided to do a little experiment to see which one blocks better between the running back on a check and release or just a straight up pass block. I did 10 reps for each against the exact same defense in the Overstorm Brave, knowing that the running back would have to pick up this blitzing middle linebacker here. So the only way that an attempt counts as a fail is if this linebacker gets the sack. I did the first 10 attempts with just pass blocking the running back, and the results were surprising as the running back would step up too far very often, allowing the running back to just run right past them and get the sack four times out of 10. I then did the next 10 attempts with my running back on a check and release. Now bear in mind that a check and release is meant to eventually release, but my goal is to see if he can stop him from coming in free before doing so. And that's exactly what he did as he stopped every single attempt and didn't give up one sack. Even on reps where it looked like the linebacker was going to run right past him, he still had a way of suctioning him into an engaged block and slowing him down, proving that the check and release is a more reliable option for pass protection as well. Next up, if you find that your receivers are constantly dropping passes, the game is not broken, you just aren't timing the catch properly. I personally haven't had this issue, but I have noticed a lot of people in the comments section. Much like passing accuracy, catching passes in Madden 24 is much more demanding as far as timing is concerned, as you have to make sure that you are inputting the catch button at the right time, or it could result in a drop. But there is a very good method that's been in the game for years to get around that requirement by simply hitting the catch button repeatedly over and over until you make the catch. This works the same with both offense and defense, as hitting the button really quickly repeatedly has no penalty and makes it much easier. So whether you are safe catching or rack catching or even trying to get an interception on defense, do this every single time and it will eliminate drops completely. Next up, I'm going to go over a cheat that you can use to beat any zone coverage in the game that I like to call the hash marks blitz. The hash marks play an important part in the passing game for all pass plays, especially one play touchdowns, as the lot require you to start the play on one hash mark or the other to be successful. This will work with a lot of different routes, but to keep it simple, I'm going to focus on the corner route. All you have to do to get this corner route open against any zone coverage in the game is run from hash mark to the short side of the field and have another receiver in that area on a streak to pull back any deep zones. And now the corner route will get open to the sideline against any zone coverage in the game. This doesn't always have to be done from the sideline depending on what offensive formation you're in, as it can have the exact same effect as long as you have two receivers that are closely aligned together. Next up, I'll go over defense starting with several things you can do before the snap. First, there are several advantages that can be had by guessing pass or run, but those advantages are also balanced by extreme penalties for guessing wrong, so it's important not to use them unless you know what your opponent is going to do. There are several ways that you can figure this out based off of your quarterback's pre-snap movements and things like that. One of the first ones is pretty rare, but it's still in the game. When on defense, whatever player your opponent is using will have their name displayed underneath. Usually it'll be the quarterback, but if they want to motion a receiver, you will see the name underneath the player once they selected them. But did you know that during a pass play, you can't select a lineman? This means that if any point in time you see the name of a lineman pop up, that you know it's going to be a run play and you can guess run at that point. The last tell comes from pre-snap movement of the quarterback. If the quarterback is under center and they tap their shoulders, that is the universal animation for flipping the run play in the other direction. When they are not under center, the cornerback will tap his hip instead. So whenever you see these animations from the quarterback, you'll once again know that it's a run play as all other hot routes and play changes will make the quarterback turn his head like he is yelling to the receivers and the linemen. When making hot routes, he will always yell in the direction of the receiver that he is changing. So that's another decent indicator on where the ball is going. Next up, if you're having trouble stopping the run, there is one defense that stands above the rest and that's cover four, whether it's match, drop, or regular. As the cover safeties will always play the run just as long as you don't pass commit. So it's best to have them as close to the line of scrimmage as possible for run support without making them too vulnerable to passes. But you can see how the outside cornerbacks will still drop back while the safeties drop down to fill the lanes, making this the best run defense to call in the game. Just don't guess pass or you will cancel that out, as they will abandon their run fits and play the pass first. Next up we'll go over user tips, as the first tip is another one that you should do on just about every single play pre-snap. Whoever you user on a given play on defense will always have an assignment, and EA has a lot of training wheels like things that are aimed at trying to help you complete that assignment, but it can also get in the way of what you really want to do on a play, since it can pull you in that direction. Direction. If you're in man coverage, it will pull you towards the receiver, and if you're in zone coverage, it will pull you towards the area that you're supposed to be covering. So whether you're in man or zone, if you want to break away from that and have more freedom as a user, all you have to do is put your user on a blitz. And now he doesn't have any responsibility to anyone or anywhere, and you will no longer feel a pull in that direction, making it easier to react quickly around the field. You can also use this for my next tip, which is gap stacking. On any given blitz, it's always helpful to blitz the user and hover a gap somewhere on the play in hopes that the blocker will target you and let an actual blitzer pass by free before you drop back into coverage, often leaving the blocker blocking no one. 
My last tip is the best way to tackle, which is simply a dive tackle. To do this, you hit X or square with an Xbox or PlayStation once again, and the defender will be able to do things like catch ball carriers from behind or far away, and it's also almost guaranteed to be a tackle, as this function seems to have a lot of power behind it, and usually results in a ragdoll animation as the ball carrier goes dead from the slightest touch. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more tip videos like this on passing or on defense, I will have them popping up on screen right now, one for offense, one for defense. So if you guys need more help, just click the links as I'm sure to help with your game and that's it thanks for watching man we should out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below